What's going on? This is Coach Will Haywood here of Blacksmith Performance, and I'm at the Lab Barba and Social Club. In this video, I'm gonna hit you with a new, never before seen exercise, which is why I'm dubbing it the Haywood Glute Bridge. Now I'm gonna share with you my inspiration for this exercise, as well as technique and execution, benefits, and how you can incorporate this into your own programs. If you're looking to skip to any of these parts in the future, it'll be timestamped below. Now let's get into it. Now I was inspired to create this exercise from my own success by using the methods in Brett Contreras and Glenn Cardoza's book, The Glute Lab. There are a ton of great exercises for hitting the lower body in ways I never even imagined. From changing body position and angle to the apparatuses used and even the direction of force. This is an exercise I really foresee a lot of different athletes using from fitness athletes like bodybuilders, Olympic lifters, weightlifters, and even athletes across other disciplines of sports and dance as well. So I wanna show you a couple of exercises that this might seem similar to, as I don't want you to get confused because detail is very important in how we execute this exercise. Here I'm demonstrating the frog pump, an awesome glute activation exercise created by Brett Contreras. Because we're fixed at the feet, bent at the knees, and externally rotated at the hips, we're recruiting a lot of those glute fibers. This may be more challenging for men or those with tight hips than it would be for women because of the way the hips are designed. So this exercise does require some good mobility there. Also because we're fixed at the feet, sometimes people get into a bad habit of simply getting into knee extension as opposed to hip extension to lead the movement and recruit those fibers. So I started to play around with this a little bit more for myself and see the different ways I can recruit fibers. So I came across a video of someone doing this exercise called the elevated frog pump. Makes sense, right? I like this variation a lot as well. With our feet elevated on the bench, our hip mobility isn't as much of a limitation as it would be with a standard frog pump. And we're also getting a lot of fibers in the hamstrings as well as the glutes with this exercise. I start to play around with this a little bit more and it led to the creation of the Haywood Glute Bridge. Check it out. So we're gonna start the setup for this exercise similar to an elevated glute bridge. First thing we're gonna focus on, our feet. They're gonna be close, similar to the frog pump, but as opposed to a frog pump, we're not gonna have them close together. We're just gonna open them up. That's gonna free up your lateral tissues and allow you to incorporate them into this exercise. We're also gonna really make sure our feet are dorsiflexed. That's gonna pull down on this tissue here. In our upper body for our setup, we're gonna make sure that we're snug and pull down towards our tor torso. That's gonna shorten that tissue and allow us to really get a good contraction from the hips down. From here, we're gonna really make sure we drive through the heels and the calcaneus. That's gonna really light up all of these fibers and ensure that we're using more of our fascia tissue. So we're gonna get a lot of muscle activation from the back here and even the lateral tissues. Drive through the heels, back down, Drive up, back down. Don't rush this movement. We've got some really long muscles here. Give them time to contract and squeeze. Always driving through the heels. Again, don't just simply extend the quads from the knees up, extending the hips. You wanna pull down from your heels to get the most out of this exercise. Now, if we wanna set this up with a dumbbell, we're gonna keep it close to us. You should already know where your foot placement, your body placement's gonna to be to make it easier. Bring that dumbbell into your body, lay it over the hips, heels are in place. All the same methods apply. Again, dorsiflexing to pull the tissue here, bring the shoulders down to relax the tissue at the top so you can really focus on the back of the legs here and even at the sides of the calves. So pull down, drive down with the heels, hips come up. And really 
really drive through those heels. And really be disciplined with that dorsiflex position. Continuously pull your toes towards you. And dismount. Now when setting up with a barbell, I recommend using bumper plates because they're easier to bring over the hips for your setup. And you'll do the same thing as if you're setting up for a hip thrust. So the Haywood glute bridge over the hips. Set up your feet in the same position, shoulders down dorsiflexion. You can have your hands in a snatch grip position. That'll kind of give you a little bit more security and allow your hands to rest somewhere. Drive through those heels. And lift up your torso, easy, smooth dismount. From that exercise, again, getting a great pump. That's a barbell set, that was pretty tough. Did 15 reps there, but again, this is a great exercise because we're doing more muscle damage here. We don't need to do metabolic stress. So again, for those who can't tolerate as much of that lactic acid, or also just don't that have that attention span to stick with 20, 30, 40, 50 reps, can make an exercise a lot more effective and hit more fibers and recruit more fibers. It's always great to do an exercise with a unilateral version if you need to. It's great accessory work and allows you to focus on one limb at a time. We can do this with the Haywood glute bridge. Same concept applies. You wanna keep that foot turned out so we're externally rotated at the hips. Again, that'll give us good recruitment of the glute fibers. With this other leg, we're gonna make sure that it's in this position. We don't wanna have our knee up like so. We wanna keep this turned out, and that's gonna make sure that, again, we're externally rotated at the hip, and we're gonna use those fibers. As we're going through this exercise, extending out at the hip, and just allow your leg to come back in that open space. Again, drive down through that heel. Get that full extension. Don't play around, keep it going all the way. Don't cut this short. Really want to get the most out of it. So again, really great and good, really great engagement, good connection, mind muscle with the lower body and all those fibers in the limbs. If you're gonna consider incorporating the Haywood glute bridge to your own workout routines, I suggest having it either as the first or second exercise in your workout. That's because it's a great bang for your buck exercise and it's gonna require more energy. So really make sure that you have this early in your workout to get the most out of it. I'd also suggest that if you're using lighter loads, anywhere between 10 to 20 reps will be optimal. And if you're using heavier loads, six to 10 reps should do the trick. If you're considering supersetting this exercise, which is already pretty tough on its own, 
I'll do other posterior chain work, such as reverse hyperextensions, hyperextensions, and even the frog pump will be great after an exercise like this. So thanks for tuning in. Brett Contreras, if you get a look at this video, it'd be great to get the EMG studies on this and see what it's really hitting and how it's really hitting certain muscle fibers. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoy this one. Blacksmith Performance.